Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to quite a unique game played by Jose Raul Capablanca in 1908 in New York. Now, the game was unique for the specific reason. The end uh, position is uh, very unique and I will explain you why during the, the video. However, interesting thing is 1908 Jose Raul Capablanca uh, didn't think too much about his chess career. I mean, he left the Columbia University, so he was considering that maybe Maybe, okay, a chess professional, it's something what he would like to, to do. And so that was definitely the first step. Uh, and in 1909, one year later, he played them the match against Frank Marshall. And Frank Marshall was so impressed that he helped uh, Capablanca to actually get invitation uh, to some strong tournament in San Sebastian uh, in 1911, where Capablanca unexpectedly won. So he started his professional chess career uh, this way. In 1908, however, uh, we have only three games of Jose Raul Capablanca in the database and one of them during the rapid tournament, rapid time control, 20 seconds per move. That was the time control at that time. And he played against Leonard B. Mayer. Now, Leonard B. Mayer was not known at that time, or almost at all. However, we know about him that uh, 15 years later, in 1923, he actually um, written the scenario to the casting coach, famous or maybe infamous uh, erotic movie from 1923. And casting coach, you can imagine, you know, how big career this phrase actually made in the, in the future. Uh, in 1930, Leonard B. Mayer became the the president of the Manhattan Chess Club. So he was a very strong player uh, and he was one of the two best players during this uh, Manhattan tournament, which we uh, actually follow. So he got the second place. Uh, Jose Raul Capablanca won that tournament and this is the final game. So without further ado, let's see why the game became quite unique. Uh, we have e4 by Capablanca. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Rui Lopez on the board a6 kicking the bishop bishop a4 so pretty normal stuff so far knight f6 and then d4 and nowadays in the 21st century and for many many years e takes on d4 is the is the main line here what white do usually is the is the castle then bishop e7 rook e1 and then kicking the bishop with b5 bishop b3 and um, and after d6 black tries to castle of course white uh, play some some other moves there are a couple of lines but for example, I will show you that bishop d5 and after exchanging the knight, uh, which is the defender of this d4, actually moves to, to e5, then knight d4 and finally black can castle and the game can continue here. Uh, so there are a couple of variations here. It's, it's pretty well known and quite a solid opening. However, uh, Mayer played knight takes on e4 uh, and this also is played a couple of times you know in the even in 21st century uh, however what white usually do here is queen e2 so as you already can imagine this is quite sharp uh, variation with a lot of traps and interesting lines if black for example uh, tries to keep the, the knight on the on the e4 uh, what can happen is for example d5 here is the main line but also there are some uh, some interesting, um, uh, very interesting games with the knight e5. Uh, and then uh, it's it's not often played. However, after knight e5, the queen can come to h5. And, and then after knight g6, this knight actually can jump to, to, to the f6. Um, and this is also very, very tricky. After queen g5, for example, h takes on g6 cannot be played. Uh, so usually black plays something like b5. Uh, but this is interesting. I will just show you uh, what can happen uh, if the knight is taken then of course queen g6 the king has to go to e7 then bishop g5 and it's not possible to actually defend the the knight so uh, the king gonna be in the in the troubles uh, white of course gonna gonna castle and so on so that's just one of the variations more popular after queen e2 actually would be b5 uh, kicking the bishop immediately uh, but of course white can play queen e4 first 
and then after d5 uh, kicking them the queen first uh, queen e3 only then b takes on a4 uh, and after knight e5 then knight e5 queen e5 queen e7 the queens can be exchanged again quite the solid black has the pair of bishops however uh, this pawn structure uh, is is a little bit shattered so white have a uh, quite interesting chances here but also have to be uh, quite the precise in them in the game however in this uh, position uh, Jose Raul Capablanca played d5 kicking the knight so quite an interesting idea knight e7 was played now this pawn is attacked but of course is defended by the queen for so for now uh, and now we have knight e5 so uh, Jose Raul Capablanca got back his pawn and get quite interesting position now according to the engine what black should play is actually harass this this bishop uh, as this bishop can be quite annoying here and also after kicking, uh, staying on this diagonal also can be very, very dangerous. So uh, what the engine recommends here is knight c5. And, and then the bishop can come to b3 and the knight can, of course, exchange or play something like c4, defending the, the bishop. And after exchanging, uh, continue the game with some strategy like g6, bringing the, the, the bishop on this diagonal and so on. For example, castle, bishop g7, rook e1. Um, um, and the castle and of course the game can continue uh, from that position everything is uh, completely fine however here Mayer actually played b5 kicking the bishop the bishop goes to this uh, beautiful diagonal so staying on this diagonal you already see that something going on uh, together with this centralized knight so um, black have to be very very careful what black should play here for the reason and i hope you see that already d6 should be played here pretty typical move in the Ruy Lopez uh, but also knight d6 this is also possible just to block the pawn and keep an eye on f7 so uh, this is this is pretty standard bishop b7 was played by Mayer uh, and now Jose Raul Capablanca has a couple of ways uh, to actually improve the position um, of his pieces he can simply castle he can bring the queen to e2 to, to, to f3 and so on however he choose the sharpest one this is 20 seconds per move so his opponent have to calculate very very precisely but d6 look at this checkmate in one move this is very very serious threat so we have knight d6 and now do you see the move this is a very very strong move and is actually boom queen d6 and in this position leonard b mayer resign and why did he resign because uh, he just calculated okay if i take the queen of course i'm losing because that's gonna be a checkmate uh, and also uh, i don't see any other way how to how to actually stop this checkmate so he resigned however try to pause the video right now and find the move which saves the game there is one move which actually saves the game and uh, Mayer didn't found it this is why he resigned but even the newspapers new york um, the newspapers wrote that that was too early so pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the game shouldn't end yet there is one move which saves the game and it's not queen c7 queen c7 actually makes the space for the king so it's pretty much logical but keep in mind that white just won the, the piece so uh, very simple bishop f7 a king d8 queen d1 or queen d2 whatever uh, and white has one extra piece so completely winning game of course uh, so not this move and um, another move would be knight d5 and this is the move we are looking for blocking the bishop so there is no checkmate uh, and now look at this the queen is trapped the queen is completely trapped so seems like jose raul capablanca actually blundered his queen and while he blundered his queen um he actually uh, won the game because his opponent resigned now uh, what can be played by by white in this position the best move is actually queen d7 so uh, sacrificing uh, giving back the material actually giving back the uh, the knight 
so queen d7 and after queen d7 knight d7 king d7 the material is completely uh, equal uh white of course gonna castle black uh, bring the rook to the game uh, also hide the king and everything is completely fine uh, and the game can continue okay so that was uh, option number one uh, also after knight d5 what white could do or uh, also it should be calculated not only queen d7 but also uh, queen d5 could be played and the reason is because now white actually uh, has the three pieces for the queen and also the rook is under attack so if the rook is moved then uh, of course we have also um the bishop f7 winning one extra pawn and the king uh, cannot do castle and um, and then it stays still in the center so it can be very very uh, interesting so these two ways to save the game for for black uh, of course are possible P probably here queen f6 would be played uh, even um, you know sacrificing this this exchange here how However, queen e5 and now the, the white king has to stay in the center so this is the question if white would of, co of course take this exchange uh, or maybe you know safety first and and castle and play with the three pieces against the queen that also would be very very interesting so that's why this game is pretty unique because Capablanca actually uh, blundered his queen or maybe he calculated that okay it's still uh, winning for me uh, at least I'm gonna have a good position and I can continue but my opponent has only 20 seconds to calculate um, and that's what happened. So that's all for today and if you like this beautiful queen sacrifice or queen blunder press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss another interesting games in the in the chess history press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one